We're back now with the seven CBS News 2016 campaign embeds, the wonderful journalists who've covered every moment of this campaign. So Pandeb covered Donald Trump. Hannah Fraser Chanpong was with the Clinton campaign. Erica Brown followed Senator Tim Kaine, Chris Christie, and John Kasich. Jackie Alemany was based in New Hampshire and then Ohio. Kylie Atwood was based in Iowa during the primaries and also covered Senator Bernie Sanders. Sean Gallitz was embedded with Senator Marco Rubio and then covered the battleground state of North Carolina. And Alan He covered Governor Mike Pence and Jeb Bush. Erica, let me start with you, but I'm gonna ask all of you this question, which is if there's a story from the road, was there a moment for you that sticks out? There was a moment, and it was a personal moment. Um, it was in New Hampshire. Before the primary, there was a really bad snowstorm, and the snow was accumulating so quickly, and I was driving, and I got very nervous. And as I was turning the corner, it seemed in slow motion, my car started to veer into a ditch, and it got stuck. Uh, and there were five gentlemen riding in a tow truck who drove past me. They stopped, came back, and started digging out my car. And I immediately got out, and I said, wait, I need to know how much this is gonna cost me first before you guys continue because I don't know if we can afford this. Um, and they said, you know, the cost is for you to do something nice for someone else. The thing that sticks out to me was on the last day of the campaign, it's eight o'clock at night, we've just landed in Manchester, New Hampshire. Mike Pence gets on the PA system on the airplane and he thanks the staff, he thanks the Secret Service, he thanks the uh, airplane crew, and then he goes ahead and thanks the reporters for telling the story of the vice presidential campaign. And then 20 minutes later, we're in this rally, this joint rally with Donald Trump and Mike Pence. And then Donald Trump comes on stage and calls us the most dishonest people. And it <laughs> could not be a more jarring experience. Um, what, did you, what, did, what did you learn about this country, about who the voters are? Hannah, we'll start with you. I think that most of the people who I met covering Hillary Clinton at her events were true believers. But there were moments on the campaign trail where she met voters who, you know, weren't going to support her or, or who were not sure if they wanted to. Um, when we went to West Virginia, um, she had a very memorable exchange with a, with a man who worked in a coal mine and he had lost his job. And I remember when we pulled up to that event, there were a lot of Trump supporters outside who were protesting. It was raining, but they were still out there. They were waiting for her and they were angry. And um, when we were inside, this man told her, you know, I represent those people outside. And I'm not sure how you can come here and tell us that you're going to be our friend. And it was just a really telling moment that I think really held up in the end. So, Ben, you were in some pretty uh, rough stadiums <laughs> from time to time covering Donald Trump. What always struck me about Trump rallies was they weren't rallies as much as they were concerts. You know, he'd come on stage, you'd be in these amphitheaters, and you'd be having, you know, and it doesn't matter what venue, he'd always start out by saying, wow look at this crowd, it's record setting, and it doesn't matter whether they're, you know, we were in a coffee shop or not, there are thousands of people outside waiting to get in. But in terms of the people, what always struck me was there, there almost was a, they want, you know, I felt like Trump supporters really wanted change, but a change back, not a change forward, which is kind of the, you know, make America great again, right? And so I always felt, you know, there was a fear of the change that was happening in the country already, and they wanted to change it back. I think, for me, as I as I talked to people at the different candidate events, um, it was clear that Americans take politics very personally, and I guess that was something that was new um, as a reporter who had covered politics, more Washington-centric politics, if you will. Um, but talking to people was my favorite part of this job because they have stories they want to tell you. I mean, I mean, I think we all know this has been a pretty divisive election. I had a week where I covered like a Bernie Sanders event on Wednesday, Ted Cruz on Thursday, Bill Clinton on Friday, back to back. And like, what I'll never forget, especially covering like a Sanders campaign rally and a Ted Cruz rally, they weren't talking to the same country, I felt like. There was, there was no commonality in, in their messaging or what they were talking about. They were painting very different pictures and. I think we're seeing some of the some of the after effects of that in some ways. So, Alan, for you, you were with Pen with uh, Governor Pence when the video comes out about Donald Trump on the mm. bus with Billy Bush and those uh, remarks. What was it like in those moments of? Uh, I mean, what happens to a campaign in a low moment, and how do the candidates respond? For the reporters covering the campaign, it felt like the campaign was in a death row. But you know, we that day we went up to the rope line, which you're not supposed to do. 
and we asked Mike Pence, you know, what's your reaction? What's your reaction? And he didn't respond. And then he just walked away. And Hannah, what was it like on the, when, the, when the Comey letter yeah. came out? We were on the campaign plane flying to Cedar Rapids the day that um, James Comey signed his letter to the Hill saying he was sort of looking at something new. And um, we had no Wi-Fi on the plane. And then suddenly a reporter who somehow got a tweet or something came up on his phone and he was like, um, you know, have you seen this? And, you know, all the campaigns sort of disappear and into their cabin and you know, consult about it. And when we landed, it was sort of unclear whether or not, you know, the candidate knew that this was happening. But the day sort of carried on like it was a completely normal day. It's, we went to the event. Um, Hillary Clinton did the event. She didn't mention it at all. And then by the end of the day, they decided to respond. And they responded pretty forcefully to, to Comey. And, um, and she, she had a little press conference, and you know, which was followed by press calls and, mm -hmm. and press releases and all this. But it was, it was a really sort of weird day. Speaking of the low moments, though, what was amazing to me amongst Trump supporters was that there were never any low moments, yeah. despite the media no. narrative. Yeah, that's right. I went to uh, the watch, a watch party in Parma uh, for a, a, hosted by a group of Trump supporters after the lewd tape had come out, the ex-Hollywood tape. And people were cheering and hooting and hollering the entire time and walked away. You know, <laughs> this Donald Trump blew, blew us away. He won hands down. That was it. You know, it was a completely different narrative. And I don't think Trump supporters lost faith once no. throughout this whole thing. No, and the most shocking moment for me on the campaign trail was uh, before a debate, uh, I was um, along with a small, the, the, pool, the pool reporters uh, were, were told, we're gonna get, you're going to get a uh, five-minute photo op with Trump preparing for the debate. And then we walk in, and, and my jaw just drops. It's There's a Trump. picture of it. Okay. <laughs> I've <laughs> seen that picture it's, in your face. It's, it's, it's Trump <laughs> with, with uh, Clinton accusers of sexual, uh, alleged sexual misconduct. And you see, I'm on the live stream. Donald Trump is live streaming the uh, uh, reaction of the reporters as they're walking in. You could see me, and you could see me kind of walk in and go. And it was truly one of the most shocking moments of, of the campaign, or probably that I've ever seen. We'll talk more about campaign 2016 with our panel after the break. And we're back with our campaign reporters talking about surprising moments on the campaign trail. I think the moment I got to play ski ball with Ben Carson was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and how is he as a ski that, ball player? I beat him by 3,000 points. Um, is that a lot or a little in ski ball? That's mm, in between. Me <laughs> um, because Dr. Carson wasn't the most accessible in terms of getting beneath the surface. Um, he would hold gaggles often, but we never quite knew what it would be like around him um, off of the campaign show, just to kind of get a sense of how he was as a person. Okay. To Erica's point, uh, when I first started this job, I pictured this similar interaction with candidates. I never got to know Donald Trump. I covered him since pretty much the beginning of his candidate candidacy. A lot of his surrogates talk about, there's this Donald Trump, this is private Donald Trump, this charming, disarming guy that is not the combative person mm -hmm. that you see at rallies and in interviews. I only saw the combative person, because he never, he never gave us any access, he never talked to us, he never, you know, I'd be surprised if he knew the names of anybody in his traveling press. Why would anybody want to be an embed? Oh my gosh, being an embed grows you tremendously as a journalist. You get to interact with so many voters and learn about what makes this country unique, what makes people um, want to come here, and what some of, the, uh, some of the concerns are with people who've lived here and have, who have families here and who um, want to be constructive members of society. Um, on top of learning about America and the people, um, being away from friends and family for a year and a half, you also learn a lot about yourself. It's the hardest thing I've ever done physically, emotionally, psychologically. I mean, this job tests you in ways you didn't think were possible. And um, you learn, like Sopan said, a lot about yourself and what you're actually capable of, whether you think you can stay awake for 36 straight hours and you know, travel the way we did and everything else. But there's also the hotel points. And, <laughs> and airline miles and all of that kind of stuff, which is not a bad perk, so. The Greek Marriott. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I was wondering who would say that. Yeah, <laughs> got like, that's I mean, a good part. they've all said it. I think it's you are on the front lines of history in in the most um, 
in the most beautiful way. I mean, you see it, you eat it, you live it, you breathe it. I mean, I I never thought that I would have such an understanding of like the fabric of America. Well, as somebody who read all of your work and profited from it, and also somebody um, who once did what you do, uh, I couldn't have done it half as well as you all did, and we are incredibly grateful for your energy, for what you taught us, and for that fact that you reminded us that there is joy in covering these races and in this incredible American experience that is an election. There was not a lot of joy at times in this campaign, and so thanks for bringing some of it back into our lives. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. <laughs>